All right, so the double integration method. The double integration method. Let me write that down. Double integration method. The double integration method is probably one of the first methods you learn when finding deflections and slopes of structures. Uh, the double integration <coughs> method is used to find uh, rotations or slopes and uh, deflections along simple spans with simple loading. Um, that's what it's used best for. Obviously, it can, it can be used for much more complex um, spans and structures. But generally, in a, in a structures course, um, we only use it to find deflections and slopes of simple spans. So say we had, say we had a beam here, and there was a, a pin here. Oops, no, 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 no. Pin here at A, and there's a roller here at B, and the length of this was span L, and then there was um, some simple loading, uh, maybe a uniformly distributed load uh, spanning from A to B. Okay? This beam this beam in particular is actually going to deflect and it's going to look something like this and we can use the double integration method to figure out what the slope is at any point along this span at any point along the span so we can figure out what the slope here of the elastic curve or the deflected shape is at a uh, we can use it to figure out what it is here at the middle of the span, we can use it to figure out what it is at B or at any other point. And we can also use this method to figure out what the deflection is at any point between A and B. So if we wanted to find the deflection at mid-span, uh, we can certainly do so using the double integration method. If we wanted to find the deflection somewhere here, we can do that, or here, or here, or here, or here. You get the, you get the idea. You can find the deflection and the rotation um, at any point between A and B using the double integration method. And the formula we use for the double integration method is d squared y dx squared. So the second derivative is equal to your m over ei. And this m right here is your internal, internal moment. It's your internal moment. <clears throat> It's the same moment you use uh, to find uh, or to draw shear and moment diagrams, particularly sh moment diagrams, right? So you cut a beam somewhere in the middle, you can figure out what the moment is, and you can draw that on your moment diagram. It's the same M. And generally, we express M in terms of X. And X is essentially a distance from a coordinate system you set up. So if we set up a coordinate system here at A, the distance from A to any other point would be distance x. Um, when we find the internal moment, we usually cut the beam somewhere, and we uh, figure out what the moment is at that point. So if I cut this beam here, just like I did, and I redrew, redrew that part of the um, uh, beam, the cuts here, right, and the distributed load uh, starts here, it just continues on. That distance x is this distance. It's the, di it's the distance that corresponds to a cut portion of the beam, a cut. Um, this was A. Um, and when we cut a beam, you know, we have an internal moment. And we can express this moment in terms of x. Or we can write m is equal to um, some equation and it has x's in in that equation right <clears throat> in this case if this weight if this distributed load was w um, you know that the resultant down would be wl right weight times the length you know that at a um, it'd be wl over 2 and this would be wl over 2 the reactions at a and b would be wl over 2 you know that the reaction at a uh, would be WL over 2. You know that this this uh, distributed load, this red distributed load, um, 
it has a resultant of wx, right? w times length. So this moment, if we did the summation of moments about maybe this point here, O, I'll just call it O, summation of moments at point O is equal to, well, let's see, you have, uh, it's equal to zero, right? So you have your moment, your internal moment here, then you have, uh, actually, I'm gonna say this is positive. So you have your internal moment here, then you're gonna subtract WL, over 2 or your reaction at, at A um, times the distance x and then plus uh, Wx which is your uh, resultant load of this red distributed uniformly distributed load um, times distance which is x over 2 and that's equal to 0 so if we solved for M it'd be WLx over 2 minus Wx squared over uh, wx squared over 2, right? wx squared over 2. This is an equation for the internal moment um, of span AB, and this will give you your moment at any distance L or any distance x. So if we wanted to find what the moment was um, right here in the middle of L, we'd plug in x is equal to L over 2. We'd plug this into this x and this x and we'd find the moment at the very middle of the span if we wanted to find what the moment was um, let's say a quarter of the way from a um, our x would be uh, one fourth of l oops that's a weird looking l uh, one quarter of l so we would plug in this x into this moment equation and we figure out what the moment is this is the same moment that we want to plug into this purple M right here. Okay, so essentially you'd have d squared y over dx squared is equal to your internal moment. And your internal moment here was in this example, I guess, as x squared over 2 minus wx squared over 2 divided by ei, right? This, we set up the moment equation, or we set up the a double integration formula. This formula says that if we integrate both sides of this equation one time, so if I just did this one time, I'd end up with dy dx, and dy dx is your slope or your rotation, and that is your rotation of um, of this elastic curve. So these these green lines or these slopes um, are your first derivative or your first integral. So your theta is equal to dy dx, and that's equal to whatever the integral of this, this right side is. And if you integrated this equation one more time, so if you integrated this original equation two times, you'd end up with y, and y is your deflection. Y is your deflection. So whatever the second, if you took, uh, if you double integrated this um, original equation, uh, you'd get your deflection. If you integrated one time, you'd get your slope at any point, right? So these two formulas you'd come up with, um, or these two variables, would be in terms of your x. Uh, it'd be some equation here, some equation here, and they'd both be in terms of x. Um, that's kind of an introduction to the double integration myth, that basically you cut a beam um, somewhere along the span, a simply support, or just a simple span, um, find the internal moment, plug that, or find the internal moment in terms of x by cutting it some at some arbitrary distance x, uh, finding the internal moment, plugging it back into this purple equation, um, integrating once to find an equation for the slope or the rotation along any point A of the elastic curve, and then you'd integrate it one more time to find the deflection of any point between A and B. Okay, now when we integrate, we usually end up, you know that when you integrate something, it's an ind if you, if it's an indefinite integral, meaning it doesn't have any, any, any limits here, you end up with constants, constant one, constant two, constant three, et cetera, it's, uh, and it keeps going, right? So we, what we do is we use tools called boundary conditions, and boundary conditions are just very um, just statements about this diagram that we drew up here 
that'll help us find what these constants are. Um, for example, here at a we have a pin. We have a pin. So that means at x equals 0, based off this coordinate system, at x equals 0, or at the location of the pin a, uh, the deflection is equal to 0. Why? Because there's a pin here, there's a support, and assuming we don't have any settlement, um, there is no deflection at point A. Um, same thing over here, at x equals L, or the distance, um, distance L, right? Um, that would bring us to roller B, and at B, Y is equal to 0, right? And because there's no deflection, there's no, um, this beam has nowhere to go at, at point B, I'm assuming there's no settlement. Um, and then let's say at x equals L over 2, or at the mid-span of this beam, uh, the slope, the slope here, this green line, or now messy blue line, um, the slope there is equal to 0. So this, this, and this are called boundary conditions. And and we'll learn a few more throughout some of the examples and you might pick up some more in your classes but these are just kind of the very basic boundary conditions um, there's one more I wanted to talk about let me actually erase erase uh, to erase all this there's a pretty important boundary condition I want to talk about uh, let's say we had a, 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 a beam here and it was fixed here Okay, and there was a, a point load P somewhere over here. You know that the deflected shape um, is going to look like, what's it going to look like? It's going to look like uh, this, right? It's going to look like this, right? And uh, actually, there's two boundary conditions here. If I call this A and I call this B, at y, oh, and let me set up a coordinate system. Here's y, here's x, um, so that's kind of our origin. So at, at x equals 0, y is equal to 0. At x, right, because there's no, there's no deflection, it's a fixed end. There's a, that's a support. At x equals 0, the slope, what do you think the slope's going to be? The slope is actually going to be 0, because and let me actually draw the green line. Let me draw the green line here. The slope is going to look like this, right? It's going to be zero. It's going to have a zero slope. Here, you know, it might... Actually, that's a very bad place to put it. Um, here, it might have some kind of a slope. Here, it might have some kind of a slope. But at point A, it's going to have a slope of zero. Why? Because this right here is a fixed end. A fixed end um, has a moment, right? A fixed end makes sure, make sure if this, actually, you know what, that's a very, very bright green. So a fixed end um, supports a moment. So at this joint right here, if I, if I could magnify that joint, this joint right here, uh, it looks something like this, right? It looks something like this. This joint um, is not going to move. So if I apply a point load P to the right here, this joint is not going to move because it's a fixed end. So at fixed ends, um, the slope is generally 0. That's why one of our boundary conditions can be x equals 0, or at, at the origin, uh, the slope is equal to 0. All right. So this is kind of a quick introduction to the uh, double integration method, one of the uh, methods used to find deflections and rotations along simple spans and hopefully the next couple examples will clear up what I talked to you guys about uh, in this video. Alright, so see you in those videos.